Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Faraz Jamil. I'm a second year medical student at the University of Cambridge. This is part two of the BMAT Section 2 2021 walkthrough, where I'm going to show you the techniques that I used in my BMAT Section 2 in order to be able to complete the paper with 10 minutes to spare and score an 8.6 and eventually get into Cambridge. All right, so welcome to part two of the walkthrough. Right, let's start with question 10. An inorganic salt was analysed to determine its composition. The compound gave a lilac flame in the flame test. That instantly tells us that it's going to be a potassium salt. So we can get rid of any answer option with lithium in it, because we know that potassium gives the lilac flame. After dis dissolving in water and adding sodium hydroxide solution, a green precipitate formed. What that tells us is that we have Fe2 plus ions present. And the reason you have Fe2 plus ions is because only Fe2 plus ions are going to give a green precipitate when you add sodium hydroxide. Okay, so now we know that Fe2 plus ions are going to be the ones present. We can get rid of any compound that only has one potassium, for example this. The reason being is the charge on the chloride ion is 1 minus. So the total negative charge is 4 minus. The total positive charge, if there's only one potassium ion and one iron 2 plus ion, is 3 plus. Therefore, it's not balanced. So let's get rid of this ion. Let's get rid of this ion. So it's between these two. Is it a chloride salt or is it a sulfate salt? Now, in both of these cases, the charge is balanced because remember, the sulfate ion has a 2 minus charge. And therefore, the total negative charge is 4 minus. The total positive charge is 4 plus. So it's either D or H. Now, after dissolving in water, acidifying with dilute hydrochloric acid and adding barium chloride solution, a white precipitate was formed. Now, the fact that we can acidify it with dilute hydrochloric acid and that we get a potassium chloride salt forming, which is the white precipitate, is going to tell us that it must be a sulfate salt. Because why would we be trying to form a chloride salt if we already had a chloride salt? So let's get rid of option D. Therefore, the correct option is answer H. As you can see, this type of question is simply factual recall mixed in with a little bit of problem solving. All right, question 11 now. A solid cuboid has dimensions of 0 0.2 by 0 0.10 by 0 0.10 meters and a density of 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. What pressure ex is exerted by the weight of the cuboid when it rests with the whole of one of its largest faces on the horizontal ground. Gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. First of all, density rho is equal to mass divided by volume. So 2000 is equal to mass, which we need, divided by 2 over 10. Remember, we're working fractions times by 1 over 10 times by 1 over 10. So 2000 is equal to m over 2 over 1000. So m is equal to 2000 times by 1000 over 2. So m is equal to 1 million kilograms, as you can see. Ah, oh, sorry, I've made a mistake there. Sorry, ignore what I've said, ignore what I've said. I've done the bottom the wrong way around, right? Right, so m two, okay, so 2,000 is equal to m divided by 2 over 1,000. So therefore, m is equal to 2,000 over 1,000 times 2, which is simply going to be 4 kg. So therefore, w is equal to mg, which is equal to 4 times 10 which is equal to 40 newtons. So now we can say that pressure is equal to force over area, which is equal to 40. And remember, it's the largest face. So 2 over 10 times 1 over 10, which is 2 over 100. Uh, let's just do this here. Sorry, it's a bit messy. So pressure is equal to 40 40 times 100 over 2, which is equal to 4,000 over 2, which is equal to 2,000 pascals. Sorry if it's a bit messy, but I think you get the general 
thought process that I'm using throughout this question. So therefore, the correct answer is going to be E. Now, just to quickly run you through what I've done. First of all, I've stuck to working in fractions. I've written down the key formulae I need to use, and I've manipulated the fractions in order to get the correct numbers, and I've kept the calculations themselves relatively simple. They've not been too difficult. Right, so question 12. Five congruent small rectangles are joined as shown to form one large rectangle. The large rectangle is mathematically similar to each of the small rectangles. Okay, for each small rectangle, find the ratio of the length of the shorter side to the length of the longer side. So, mathematically similar means that the relative ratio between the long side to the short side, between the large and the small rectangles, are the same. So essentially, what we can do is we can call the width of the large rectangle y and the width of each smaller rectangle x so let's label that label that on the diagram okay so let's start with the large rectangle and work from there so and we know that the ratio of the short side to the long side is the same on both for both the large and the smaller rectangles so length of the shorter side let's start with the large rectangle so y the ratio of y to 5x is going to be equal to the ratio of x to y. This is the ratio of the short to the long side of the large rectangle, and the ratio of the short to the long side of this each small rectangle. So now what we do is with ratios we can express them as fractions. So we can say that y over 5x is equal to x over y, therefore y squared is equal to 5x squared, y is equal to the root of 5x squared. And now what I do here, because we're looking for a ratio in the form of 1 to something, and because x is the smaller side for each small rectangle, so please follow my line of reasoning there, we're looking for the ratio where the unit length of the short side is 1. So let's say let x equal 1, then y is going to be equal to root 5. So therefore, if we say that the short side is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to root 5. So the ratio is equal to 1 to root 5. And that's going to be answer option A. So if we just follow back through my logic, we use the laws of similarity to construct a equation in terms of ratios, convert it to fractions. Then you put a sample value of x using the answers to the question as a rough guide. And then from there, what you do is you just find the ratio using that sample value of x. Since x for each small rectangle is the shorter side, and that's what you want on the left side. Okay. Now let's go to question 13. This, is, this one is simply a factual recall question. So the diagram shows the, ch the changes in the structure of the uterus lining during a menstrual cycle in a healthy female. Two regions are labelled Q and R, and S shows when ovulation occurs. Okay, which row shows the changes in hormone levels responsible for the changes shown in the diagram during Q, during R, and during ovulation S? So, changes in progesterone concentration leading to the effect during Q. So, menstruation is caused by decrease in progesterone. So, that's correct. We'll go through each answer option sequentially. Now, Change in estrogen concentration leading to the effect during R, so thickening of the uterus lining, that's going to be an increase, so that's also correct. Changing in luteinizing hormone concentration in S, so what hormone causes ovulation? That's a spike in LH. That's correct, therefore the correct answer option is going to be A, so that's all fine. If you're looking for an online BMAT video course, head on over to sigmamed.co.uk. It's an online BMAT video course that teaches you the content you need to know, the exam technique you need to use, and goes over more than 30 worked examples to show you how exam technique is applied in the actual exam. It's made by me and my friend Hamza, both of us study at Cambridge, and it costs only £25, which as far as I can see, is the most affordable BMAT video course on the market, and also, in my humble opinion, the best. So I would recommend any student who is sitting the BMAT next month to go to sigmamed.co.uk and buy the course. It is an investment into your future and all of the students we've had so far on the course have been extremely satisfied and reported that it has significantly helped them with their BMAT preparation. So head on over to sigmamed.co.uk to buy your course and help you ace the BMAT like a Sigma. Right, so question 14, here we go. Carboxylic acids react with alcohols to make esters. 
A small amount of concentrated sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst. Consider the following ester. What is the name of the alcohol that was used to form this ester? So, let me just change my pen. So, the alcohol is the part that is bonded to the single bond oxygen in the ester. So, this is going to be the alcohol part. So, now if we draw this out in full, that's going to be CHH3CH3. So, the longest straight carbon chain is 3, so it's going to be prop something. So, the alcohol is on the second carbon if we count from either direction. So, it's going to be therefore propan to all. All because it has the alcohol, propan because it has three carbons, and two because it's on the second carbon. So, the correct answer is therefore going to be answer option H. Okay, now question 15. An escalator between two floors in a shop consists of steps that are 30 centimeters high and 40 centimeters deep. So, the stairs, they're going to look like this. So 30 cm, 40 cm, if we draw it out. Remember, with B, we might draw lots of stuff out. So, there are 20 steps between the floors. The escalator moves a person of mass 80 kilograms upwards from the lower floor to the upper floor. How much work is done by the escalator on the person? So, remember, work done is equal to force times distance moved. And, in this case, force is going to be mg, which is going to be equal to weight, which is going to be equal to 80 times 10, which is 800 newtons. So, now, so we have force. Now we need distance. Distance is going to be 30 centimeters times by 20, which is going to be 600 cm, which is equal to 6 meters. Therefore, work is going to be 800 times 6 is equal to 4,800 joules. Therefore, the correct answer option is going to be answer option D. Now, I went over that quite quickly. I'm just going to quickly recap. So first of all, I drew a diagram of the steps. It's given you the depth of each escalator step as a distractor because this this length is not relevant. Now, then I wrote out the two key equations I need to use. I used the information given to find F. I used basically just simple math to find the distance moved. Remember the vertical distance moved. And remember, you have to work in standard units, so I worked in meters. And then I just said that work done is going to be the product of the force and the distance, which is 4,800 joules, which is the correct answer. So that's how you do this type of question. Simple equations, simple math. You just make sure you need to make sure you read the question and discard useless information. And also make sure you use visual diagrams as I've used in this question. Right, so we're on question 16 now. So the line with the equation y is equal to minus 2x plus 1 is reflected in the line with equation x is equal to 2. Which of the following is the equation of the new line? So let's draw a simple graph. Y, x. So the line y is equal to minus 2x plus 1 has a y-intercept of 1 and an x-intercept of 1 over 2. So that's, that's going to be the original line. So let's say the line x equals 2 is here. So if we're going to reflect this line exactly, it's going to look something like this. Excuse my line. So that's a reflected line. So first of all, there's two things we can see. The gradient of this is simply going to be the same as the gradient of the original line, but positive. So therefore, the gradient is going to be equal to 2. So we can get rid of the first four answer options. Now, in terms of finding an equation of the line, we know that they intersect at the point x equals 2. So we can say that x, at x equals 2, y is equal to minus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is equal to minus 3, where x equals 2. So now we can, we can just use the standard equation. y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1. So y plus 3 is equal to 2x minus 2. y is equal to 2x minus 4 minus 3. y is equal to 2x minus 7. That's going to be answer option E, and that's the correct answer. Now just to quickly recap what I did. I drew a simple graph, remember, always use visual aids in the BMAT, it really helps, make use of the paper. From that graph, I use deduction to realize that the gradients are going to be equal since it's reflected in a vertical plane. 
going to be the same gradient but the opposite sign then I use the fact that they intersect at right here where x is equal to 2 in order to find a coordinate that lies on the reflected line and from that I use the standard equation to find the final answer bit more of a difficult question but same strategies draw out your diagrams be smart with the maths and look for things you can use to simplify the question so for example with this question instead of actually solving through where they intersect I just use the fact that the reflection point is at x equals 2 I already have the original equation so from that I can find a point on the new line right question 17 a scientist studying the blue ring octopus made the following observations. It inhabits shallow coral reefs where temperature, water temperatures are between 26 and 29 degrees, feeds on crabs, shrimp and fish. It uses a toxin to paralyze its prey and defend itself from predators. The toxin used by the blue ring octopus is produced by bacteria living in the nutrient rich environment of the octopus's salivary glands. Fine. Which one of the following statements about the blue ring octopus is slash or correct? Temperature is a biotic factor which restricts where blue ringed octopuses can live. So, is temperature a biotic factor? No, temperature is an abiotic factor. So we know that statement one is incorrect. So we can get rid of any answer option that includes one. The relationship between the blue ringed octopus and the bacteria is an example of mutualism. That's not an example of mutualism. Sorry, that, sorry, sorry, sorry. That is an example of mutualism since it benefits both organisms. That's going to be correct. Now, statement three, the blue winged octopus and its crab, shrimp and fish that it eats make up a population of organisms. No, because the population is going to be made up of individuals of different species and multiple different foods, food webs interlinked. So statement three is incorrect. Therefore, only statement two is correct. And answer option C is the correct option. Right, thank you for watching part two. Make sure you subscribe so that you're ready for part three. And I'll show you all how to ace the BMAT, especially section two, like a Sigma.